What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Chronicles. My name is Amir. Got my boy Martel joining me today. How are you doing, Martel? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to thank everybody for subscribing to my channel. I'm on my path to 2,000 subscribers, so if you guys could subscribe to the channel, that would mean a lot. And also, for any of my followers who are subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe to Martel's channel. You can find him at the Miami Heat Zone podcast, and I will link his channel in the description. So for today's episode, I wanted to talk to Martel about free agents. So the Miami Heat have no cap space. We're a first apron team, and we still have some extensions that we have to to focus on this offseason, but we're not going to be contenders for any of the top free agents paul george demar derozan clay thompson all those guys want you know maximum money so right now the only way we can improve this roster outside of trades in the free agency market is with veteran minimum salaries or even the uh the taxpayers mid-level exception so two guys on the team we can assume are most likely going to walk one i think 95 percent Sure, this guy's going to walk is Caleb Martin. He has a player option for $7 million or so uh, this next season. And he's going to be looking for his second NBA contract and his first real contract. So um, NBA insiders have reported that they expect him to make anywhere between the 10 to $13 million per season range. So he's probably going to be looking for like a three-year $30 to $45 million deal. Miami, he can't afford that. The other player, Haywood Highsmith, is an unrestricted free agent. I think Haywood made $2 million last season. And this guy drastically improved. One of the top three and D league. I know Michael Scotto of uh, Hoops Hype was on Locked On and basically said, he thinks there's going to be a lot of interest for Haywood Highsmith around the league. He's that typical prototype of 3 and D player. He shot 40% from three this season. He thinks even Haywood could make $10 million per year. So, Martel, my question to you, how do we replace these two? Let's say both are gone, right? Not just Caleb, but let's say we're losing Haywood too. Those are two big, important bench players that we're going to lose that are wing players right and defensive minded players for that matter too so who are two guys that come in mind that you see that are free agents that could fill those holes next season see but that's the problem that i kind of have with the miami heat because we kind of let these guys go out for nothing after we build them up we built up max Struess, yep. we built up gabe vincent we built up djj we built up you know now kayla martin and haywood highsmith and now they're going to walk out the door and we really didn't get anything in return So even though they might not be the greatest players to wherever they go, but we built them up and we should at least get some type of compensation in terms of picks and other assets as they go out. So it's kind of like unfortunate that they kind of all walk out the door for nothing. But in terms of actually building a proper roster, it really all comes down to the Jimmy Butler max. Do we get Donovan Mitchell or do we get other pieces? Do we trade Terry? Do we trade Tyler? But, you know, if we could have a perfect world, it's pretty much going to have to be veteran minimums because – we're in cap hell, or we're at least close enough to it. So guys like Gordon Hayward, where I know he didn't really get any playing time in OKC, and actually he was pretty pissed off that he didn't get any playing time. I know that the owner of OKC said that it was a mistake that they traded for him. So I know he's going to have some type of a fire under him to come back, at least for maybe one or two more strong seasons. I understand he has a very strong injury history, and he really hasn't played meaningful basketball in a few years, but... It's like I said, if we do get a Donovan Mitchell, if we do get another star, or even if we keep this team and we give Jimmy Butler a max, beggars can't be choosers. We can't sit around here and act like we can just hand out $30 million contracts to other people. We just can't afford it. So a guy like Gordon Hayward, a solid veteran, and look what we did with Kevin Love. They were willing to cast away Kevin Love, and Kevin Love is pretty much our best buyout guy we've ever had in Miami Heat history. I mean, look at what Kevin Love has been able to do at his old age. So I think getting a veteran... A guy with experience like Gordon Hayward. And then also, too, a guy like Jamal Cain. He's been in our system for a while now. I know he's wanted an actual contract. He's tired of the two-way contracts. He's a 6'6 guy who's athletic, great defender. And he has another year in the Miami Heat system and another offseason with the Miami Heat. He can only improve from here. And he's the guy that, once again, we're building these guys up. And hopefully he can make the roster. And then another swing at it, too, maybe even Jay Crowder. I know he's a lot older. 
His defense is falling off. His three-point shooting isn't the best, but he really never wanted to go to Milwaukee. He always wanted to come back to the Miami Heat ever since he left us after that bubble run. So who knows? You know, like I said, we're going to have to really look across the NBA and take chances on guys because we don't really have the money to get some of these premium level guys. But I'd rather take these guys on than just go with the undrafted route where you're kind of uncertain about their play. That's totally fair. I like the route that you chose. One was like an internal cheaper option because Jamal Cain, even if we do sign him to a standard contract, it's not he's young and he's not going to get that. Uh, veterans minimum salary like it depends on the the years of service i think it's like seven years you get x amount and then like up 10 years and above you get like three point something which is the max so with jamal kane you can get like 1.8 million or something like what haywood was getting you know his first few years 1.5 million so i like that idea of having someone internal and then i like the idea of obviously getting someone more seasoned and uh getting veterans you've mentioned this before in roundtable episodes like we need NBA players. Like we can't just go after the undrafted, even though you did say let's maybe upgrade like or promote a undrafted player internally because he's in our system. But a Gordon Hayward move could be underrated or it could be disastrous. Who knows? Like these guys, when they get to age 33, 34, sometimes they just fall off a cliff. We've seen that with other players. But if you could be like a either if you could be like a I don't know which one is it? Is it Bog? Well, they're both. Bogdanovich, they have the same name, right? Bogdan Bogdanovich. If he could be like the the New York version, um, not the Atlanta one, because he's obviously younger, that would be huge. Because like, if he's the Gallinari, then that's going to be bad. Because once Gallinari got into his thirties, you know, he's been getting injured every single year. He has fallen off a cliff. Bogdanovich on New York has not, right? He's dealt with his injuries, but he's still a bucket. So I think those are two good picks. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Miami Heat Chronicles. And so in the comments, let us know what kind of more episodes you guys want during this off season. It's going to be a long off season and there's going to be other free agent spots that we're going to need to focus on this off season. So it's not just replacing our wings. We need to replace potentially DeLon Wright or Patty Mills. We don't, they're free agents. So we do need a backup point guard. We obviously need some backup bigs, right? A backup center potentially. So Obviously, if we can't fulfill those spots and those needs within the trade market, let us know if you guys are more interested in us talking about other positions and how we could replace those guys in free agency and give us some names that we can possibly talk about in our next episode. So anyway, thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe to Martel's The Miami Heat Zone podcast. Thanks again, Martel, for joining. Thank you.